The waters surrounding the UK are well known for having lots of different shark species, from our coastal residents like cat sharks and bullhuss, to seasonal visitors like blue sharks and basking sharks. Other seasonal visitors to British waters include the famous cousin of the great white shark, the poor beagle. We also get the speedy shortfin mako and even thresher sharks on occasion. There's even been reports of rogue oceanic white tips entering our waters, and a hammerhead shark spotted off the southern coast of Ireland in the Celtic Sea. So it's clear we do get a lot of different shark species in these waters at different times of the year. But have those sharks ever attacked humans? Well, the short answer to that is yes, they have. The vast majority of shark attacks in the UK have been classified as provoked incidents. If you have a look at the stats, you'll see large swathes of the attacks were as a result of anglers catching a shark, hauling it into their boat, and then getting bitten because of it. I mean, what did you expect, really? There have been some other strange shark-related incidents in the UK down the years, though. An incident off Scotland happened in 1937 when a basking shark capsized a 15-foot dinghy, plunging all three on board into the water, where they all unfortunately drowned. Another strange one involved two men off the Lizard Peninsula down here in Cornwall in 1956. The two men were providing support for divers off HMS Burley when they spotted a large shark near the divers. In an attempt to scare the shark away, they threw boxes of diamonds dynamite overboard, but the rope attached to the dynamite boxes snagged around the shark's dorsal fin. The shark, a now living torpedo, swam towards them and was directly underneath the boat when the charges went off, killing both men on board and presumably the shark. Don't play with gunpowder, kids. Every now and again, though, there have been some slightly more serious attacks, of which could somewhat be classified as unprovoked. None more so than the incident of Cornwall, where I live, back in 2022. At the time, this attack was listed as Britain's first shark attack in 175 years, which isn't exactly true, but don't worry, we're going to get onto the news media and coverage stuff a bit later on. Boy, are they in for a grilling today. Despite the media storm that circulated after the incident, most of the story has been kept completely under wraps for the last few years. So I've had to do some real digging and call in a few favors from people I know here in Cornwall to try and get the scoop on this story. First, I'm gonna give you the breakdown of what happened according to what we know online. And then after, I'm gonna give you some more of the intricate details that have been kept pretty quiet. So on Thursday, the 28th of July, 2022, a group of snorkelers were out on a shark swim swimming experience about 15 miles off the coast of Penzance. That's somewhere around here on this little map. Blue sharks are regular visitors off our coasts in the summertime and the ecotourism industry here has capitalized on this quite a bit. I'm not going to name the company because I don't want to give them any bad press and I don't really think there's any need to. But they have been operating as a shark tourism company for a few years now down here in Cornwall. I have swum with blue sharks on an ecotourism experience very similar to this one in Cornwall before, albeit not with this particular company. Just before lunchtime, the Coast Guard was notified that a female member of the snorkeling party had sustained a leg injury from a shark bite. The injured tourist was quickly rushed back to shore where the Coast Guard assisted with helping her to the ambulance. And later, it was revealed that the woman had no serious complications from her injury. And that's pretty much it. That's all we got officially. The statement from the company who runs the experience was pretty standard, as you might expect, but no real details were revealed about the incident. And then we also got a statement from the woman who was bitten who thanked the company for their speedy response time in what was a scary situation for her. But that's it. Nothing else was spoken about why it happened or any other additional details. It was just kept completely quiet. I did reach out to the company on several occasions over the last year or so before I made this video to try and get some additional details about it. But as they're perfectly entitled to, they didn't respond. One might pose the question, why? You can see though, I've really had to do some additional digging to get any information about this. Thankfully, I did manage to get hold of a few people who had some additional information and I consider them to be trusted sources. On the specific day that this bite happened, conditions were said to be average at best. The water was a bit choppy and the visibility wasn't great, which does happen down here in Cornwall quite a lot, but the trip went out regardless. And when you've got conditions like this, in-water experiences with sharks can be particularly challenging. On one one of the occasions that I went out to snorkel with blue sharks, we got about four or five miles offshore and realized that the conditions that day just weren't right and so called it off. We knew at that time it just wasn't going to be safe. Visibility and sea state are really important in ensuring that you have a safe encounter with any shark species. Okay, it's not a case of if the visibility is poor, you're 100% gonna get bitten, but it does play a role. As well as this, on the day of the incident, there were several people in the water at the time. Now, this would normally 
normally be okay provided you had an adequate number of people in charge of safety and if the conditions were ideal. There's no hard and fast rule as to how many people you can have in the water at one time, but obviously the more people you have in the water, the more challenging it is to keep an eye on them all. In my opinion, a safe number of people in the water at one time with these animals is probably about three or four. Now, like most companies who offer this kind of experience, they would have been using a bait or a chum box. This is usually a small container filled with some dead fish that produces an oily slick. It's usually put out into the water and then the oil drifts down the current and eventually the sharks get wind of it and come in to investigate. So it's this factor here that adds a little bit of confusion as to whether this was a provoked or an unprovoked incident. We know that the global shark attack file has listed incidents before as being provoked when there's bait or chum in the water. Simon Nellis springs to mind. Interestingly here though, this 2022 Cornwall incident is listed as unprovoked. Bait and chum in the water, provoked or unprovoked, regardless, this woman was bitten by a decent sized and relatively bold blue shark. The online reports state that she was bitten on the leg. Some even specify that it was the lower leg, but the people that I've spoken to who've seen photos of the bite and one who's seen video footage of the incident said she was bitten high up on the thigh somewhat close to the groin. One of the people that I spoke to based on the position of the bite raised the possibility of menstrual blood playing a role. Of course, this is complete conjecture and there's no way that anyone could prove that unless the lady came out and said that that was the case. But the approximate location of that bite might indicate to it being a possibility on this occasion. I think it's unlikely, but not impossible. The sharks would be sensing the amino acids in that blood, just like they could possibly sense amino acids in urine as well. But even a double whammy here of blood and we in a wetsuit, the concentrations there are still quite small. With inquisitive blue sharks in such close quarters, something like this might be enough to encourage an exploratory bite. Although there's some additional contextual factors based on the video footage of the incident that I think outweighs the whole menstrual blood thing. According to those that have seen the video, which of course you're not gonna find anywhere online, the woman in question had been struggling in the water with her fins. They'd been given her blisters on the back of her heel, so she headed back onto the boat to take them off. Unbeknownst to the safety crew, she took her fins off and then got back in the water without them on. And as soon as you do this, you massively run the risk of having an incident. If you've ever swum with fins on before and then taken them off while you're in the water, you'll know how much of a difference it makes to your swimming ability. Your legs start to kick and flail a bit more as you're treading water, and that creates more splashes and water movement around you that can lure in an inquisitive shark. This, on a day where the water conditions aren't completely still and flat, is a really bad idea. Blue sharks are naturally quite an inquisitive shark species, and when you've been in the water with them before, you'll see that they're almost like dogs. And generally, the bigger they are, the bolder they can be. The larger ones will regularly come in, nose first, and really get up close and personal with you. But because the larger ones are bolder, they can be a little bit more aggressive as well. So the woman is in the water with no fins on, her legs are kicking and flailing, and a big female shark has made a close pass on her left-hand side and just spun 180 degrees, almost snaking back on itself, and just clamped down high up on her thigh. The lack of fins here has made a huge difference. All of this on a day where the viz isn't great and you've got a few too many people in the water, the chances of something like this happening are considerably higher. I think there's no doubt what happened here was an unfortunate accident and I imagine the company learned a few more things about shark safety after the incident. Considering there's been no more reports of further incidents with blue sharks down here in Cornwall, I'd like to say they have. In that pretty scary situation, the crew did everything right from there on. They called the medical services and got that woman to medical professionals as quickly as they could. From what I've heard as well, a few different organizations now are working together to create a code of conduct conduct for blue shark snorkeling, which I'm sure will encompass a hard and fast rule as to exactly how many people you can have in the water at one time, as well as equipment regulations for the people who decide to go in the water. But what came after this Cornwall shark bite was an absolute shit show. The media cottoned on to what had happened and a few days later on the 2nd of August 2022, they came out with their usual tripe. The Daily Fail was up to its usual antics, going with the headline, snorkeler let out a piercing scream after being attacked by a shark in Cornwall. And of course, the newspaper whose name, who shall not be mentioned, went with shark horror, shark attack, Cornwall. There were loads of news articles like this doing the rounds at the time, despite this particular incident being so minor. Quite a few went with first shark attack in 175 years, which, as I mentioned earlier, isn't exactly true. There's been lots of the provoked ones, of course, but in 2017, a surfer was attacked unprovoked off Bantham Beach in Devon, which isn't too far away from Cornwall, by a meter long shark. The shark remained unidentified, but according to the 
surfer, he was bitten on the leg, bruising him through his wetsuit. And in punching it to get it off, he managed to slice up his hand, likely on those rough placoid scales running along the shark. As to exactly what shark it was, it could have been any small shark species, or a juvenile of one of the larger ones. A bullhurst, a smoothhound, I'm not sure. And as to why it happened, I imagine this shark was just really disorientated in the surf and turbid water and just latched on. Anyway, back on topic, the media went absolutely mad for the blue shark incident because the woman was hospitalized and it's a really dramatic story, despite it not really being that dramatic at all. And as usual, they're the true villains of this story. After the media shitstorm surrounding this incident, quite a few businesses here in the UK involved with shark tourism had to cease operations. One of whom was a friend of mine, Nigel Hodge. Nigel was operating out of Falmouth in Cornwall and had been doing blue shark snorkel experiences for over 20 years without incident. After the media ran wild with this story, shortly after, Nigel got a call from his insurers telling him that his in-water cover had changed. They massively ramped up the price of it to ridiculous levels, and Nigel and his small team operating out of Falmouth just couldn't afford to pay it. And this happened without Nigel having ever made an insurance claim or having any in-water incident in the 20 plus years that he'd been doing it. So not being able to pay the massive insurance hike, Nigel had to stop running his Blue Shark snorkel tours. Another person, Charles Hood, who I did try and get in touch with before making this video, but he didn't respond, he's also had to stop. For years, Charles has been taking people out on trips to snorkel and photograph Blue Sharks. Here he is being interviewed by TV show This Morning shortly after the 2022 incident, reiterating how rare an event like this is and the steps he takes as a tour operator to ensure in-water safety. But mysteriously on his website, not long after the 2022 incident, Charles suspended all his Blue Shark snorkel trips. And as of making this video in 2024, they're still suspended. I've obviously not been able to get in touch with Charles to ask him myself, but I do wonder if a similar situation has happened here with the insurance as to what happened to Nigel. So you can see because the media decided to sensationalize the events that happened off Penzance, it actually ended up closing down two small businesses. And that's at least two as well. I imagine there's quite a few more. I think sometimes when people think of the media and sharks, they think that the sharks are the only ones negatively impacted by that bad coverage. But here we can see it actually stopped two small businesses from earning their trade, despite those businesses never having any negative interactions with sharks at all. It's pretty sad really, and it just shows you the power of a few poorly written news articles and the devastating ripple effect that they can have. All to sell a few newspapers. Oh, I actually hate newspapers. Channel 4 News at six o'clock. Anyway, guys, those are my thoughts on that one. Again, I'd like to remind you that incidents like this are so rare and often, as we can see here, are completely blown out of proportion. What do you guys think of it then? Do you guys remember when it happened? Do you think it was exaggerated a little bit? I wanna hear all your thoughts in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, please do give it a like and don't forget to hit that subscribe button as well. But before you head off, if you like today's video about this shark bite incident, then you'll probably quite like this one right here. In it, I analyze a bunch of different shark attacks that have been caught on film. There's one in there from a tiger shark that is absolutely unreal. So make sure you check it out here.